Welcome to the State of the Union from Brussels. If it were a football match, the summary could be Farmers defeated the European Green Deal in the penalty shootout. Or we could say that the European Commission left the stadium after announcing this week that it was withdrawing a controversial law aimed at reducing the use of pesticides throughout the European bloc. The so-called Sustainable Use Regulation, known by its acronym SURE, aimed to halve the use of pesticides by 2030. It also proposed a total ban on these products in sensitive areas, such as urban green spaces and Nature 2000 sites, and promoted the adoption of low-risk alternatives. But the President of the European Commission admitted to members of the European Parliament that the law was blocked. The Commission proposed SUR, which is the worthy aim to reduce the risks of chemical plant production products. But the SUR proposal has become a symbol of polarization. It has been rejected by the European Parliament. There is no progress anymore in the Council either. Ursula von der Leyen said the issue will not disappear from the political agenda, but a rematch should only take place after the European elections in June. What we'll also have to wait until the next European Commission takes office is the concrete legislative proposals to ensure that the European Union reaches its new climate target for 2040. The announcement was also made at the plenary session of the European Parliament, a 90% cut of all greenhouse gas emissions in comparison to 1990 levels. It's a recommendation aimed at ensuring climate neutrality becomes a reality by mid-century. The Commission warned that time is running out when it comes to stopping catastrophic climate change for the planet. We will keep on offering to our industry, businesses and financial institutions the thing they always ask for, clarity and predictability for their investments. And 2040 seems far away, but the sooner we start planning, the sooner we start working towards it, the better equipped we will be to continue and ultimately finish this journey. Following the European Commission's announcement, I spoke with Linda Kalker, Executive Director at the think tank Strategic Perspectives, focused on climate action. Linda Kalker, thank you very much for accepting our invitation to comment on such an important announcement by the European Commission. Uh, let's start with the target that is in place. So, 55% fewer emissions by 2030. Well, it's 2024 now and the EU will only have cut about 30%. So, will it be able to meet that target in six years' time? I think we're actually on a good pathway. So we have seen that a lot more renewable energies have been built for the last years. So we have solar panels and more windmills being built. So that's a really good trend for the power sector. We also see that some of the prices are coming down for heat pumps or electric vehicles. So that helps also the consumer to actually shift to new technologies. And we also need to remember that obviously the laws have just been adopted this year, so it really takes time for capitals and member states to implement them. So I would assume that over the next two, three years, we see much more happening on the ground. Well, that's good news. And the target for 2040 that was announced is now 90% of cuts. But there were no dates uh, regarding, you know, phasing out uh, fossil fuels, uh, even the subsidies to those fuels, because uh, they are responsible for the vast majority of polluting emissions. Another sector that was also spared to a precise uh, target uh, uh, is the agricultural sector that we know has been very active in terms of uh, protest. How important it is to have uh, those indications? Obviously it's a bit complicated in the European setting because we have the carbon market that regulates how the emissions decline, but it doesn't necessarily specify at what end point we're phasing out coal or gas in the power sector. We though feel that it's really important for the just transition, so a worker needs to understand when does the coal mine stop producing coal, when is a new job opportunity coming? Also the farming sector needs to become more resilient. We have seen especially in the south of Spain and the south of Italy already drought levels now that are very high and it's only the beginning of February. So there's a lot of pressure also coming from climate impacts on the farming sector. Mm. 
And how do you think the war in Ukraine and, and all these crises, energy crisis, cost of living crisis, will affect this very ambitious goal? Are governments, citizens, the economic agents prepared to make those efforts? We have seen, especially in response to the crisis, that there were a lot of citizens in the Czech Republic, in Poland, that went to buy heat pumps because their energy bills were so high. We know the transition needs to go towards green steel, towards green electricity, towards more greener products. And now we need an enabling environment to spell out how. It's really coming strong out of the Commission's proposal that it needs to be about investments and a new industrial deal. And I think there is really uh, interesting debate to come, especially if you look at where you can create jobs, where you can create the manufacturing for these green products. But it, it needs a new industrial strategy for Europe. Thank you very much for coming to this program and giving such in-depth explanation of what's going on and what's to come. Thank you. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. Environmental and industrial policies are areas that member states recognize as benefiting from a more European approach. But the same does not apply to more sensitive policies of national competence such as criminal law. 14 of the 27 EU countries did not allow the crime of rape to be included in the European Union's first ever law to combat violence against women. It was not possible to reach a common interpretation of this crime, which the European Commission's initial proposal defined it as sex without consent. Nevertheless, the representatives of the government and of the European Parliament reached an agreement on terms to protect women from gender-based violence, forced marriages, female genital mutilation and online harassment. That's it for this edition. Thank you for watching.